Hey everyone, and happy 4th of July. This is Taylor with the Cyber and U team. And in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to set up your own domain controller using Windows Server 2019. But we're actually gonna be utilizing Microsoft Azure. So obviously you're gonna to need to set up a Microsoft Azure account, and you can initially receive a $200 credit to utilize Azure Cloud Services for free. I'll actually put that link down in the description so you can see that later. You also need to create a virtual instance that are hosting Windows Server 2019. I went ahead and took care of that in the background just to streamline this process. There are a couple other things that I did. I created a virtual network, as you can see here on the left-hand side. So we're uh, using Cyber and U domain VNet, and I went ahead and did some IP configuration to set up our VMs with the static IP, which you're gonna need when you're setting up a domain controller. So now that we have all the prerequisites out of the way, what the heck is Azure? Azure is Microsoft's cloud computing platform it's basically like having your data center right here in Azure. Uh, so that means you don't have to have your own equipment and infrastructure set up and Microsoft takes care of all that for you. So your organization would wanna use that because it's highly scalable and it's uh, easy to add and remove VMs uh, with a click. Uh, since it's cloud technology, you can basically access it anywhere that you have an internet connection. And in some cases you can access it offline. Uh, the customer service is top-notch uh, Microsoft. When you throw that name out there, everybody knows that you're getting a quality product. And that allows you to focus on the things that truly matter to you, to you uh, like your data, your product, product designs, or your service. Things like disaster recovery, backups, and even security all are handled by Microsoft. They also offer hybrid solutions, which are great if you're trying to avoid any type of single point of failures or if you have an old on-premises domain that you'd like to bring over. And there are over a hundred different services that Azure provides. I won't get into all those right now. This is kind of beyond the scope of this video. But the real question you have to ask yourself is how will you use it? So like I said, today we're gonna to talk about creating a do-it-yourself domain. Basically this means instead of using the built-in Azure Active Directory, which you can see here on the left, you're actually gonna be able to manage your own domain structure. So there are some benefits to that. And the main reason that I'm doing it is so later on I can set up a trust uh, with another domain. So we're gonna go to our virtual machines here. We're gonna click VM1, it takes a little bit. And you're gonna click connect. And you're gonna download the RDP file. Now something to keep in mind when you're creating your virtual machines is that you actually have to allow the RDP port. Download the RDP file, click open. Go ahead and click connect and it's going to prompt you for some credentials. So, and you actually set this up during the uh, virtual machine process. All right. And then you just hit yes. Now, while this is coming up, uh, I went ahead and used something called a resource group. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that real quick. I use the resource group here called Cyber and U domain. Now, something great about Azure is that it allows you to group all of your resources into a group. So uh, again, let's go back um, to our RDP connection. So the reason why those resource groups are awesome is because you can actually manage everything in the resource group. You can delete everything in your resource group at the same time. All right, now that the server's up, we're gonna go ahead and add the Active Directory Domain Services role. So again, on the back side, uh, what I did is I created a virtual network of is basically creating the network that this domain is gonna reside on. Uh, I also went ahead and set some static IPs. That's gonna be uh, needed for DNS. So let's click Add Roles and Features. So in this prompt, you're gonna get a little bit of a uh, rundown of what you're doing. We're gonna go ahead and skip this. We're gonna do a role-based install. And we're definitely doing it on VM1. And we're going to select Active Directory Domain Services. We're gonna add this feature. And then we're gonna keep all the other defaults. Click Next, Next. And then now you're at the confirmation page. Just go ahead and check that, hey, we are indeed using Active Directory Domain Services. Click Install. And the installation process is gonna take a little bit, so we'll come back after that's done. All right, and we're back after the installation. It took it a anywhere from 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit the close button. And now all we have to do to promote this server to a domain controller is you're gonna click the flag here in the left or the right hand corner, promote the server to a domain controller, and it's gonna bring up the deployment configuration window. Um, so we're gonna add this, uh, we're gonna add this server 
our domain controller to an, to a new forest because we're going to create our own. So you get to actually choose your domain name here. So if you're hosting a website, most likely it's going to be that. Click next. So right here, we're actually going to create a password for the domain services restore mode, which is basically like booting up into Windows in the safe mode. So we'll go ahead and create that password now. Click next. I'm going to click next. And then we're going to set the NetBIOS domain name. Most likely it's just going to come up with cyber for the domain name. So actually the uh, NetBIOS name is CyberNew. So basically what this allows DNS to do is instead of typing out the fully do, uh, fully qualified domain name, which would be CyberNew.com, we're actually going to be able to just type in CyberNew. In this case, I actually just want to um, actually just want to condense that down to cyber. Click next. Click next. If there's actually another place that you want to store any of these database log files and sysvol folders, you can. I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep the defaults. So you actually get a last chance to review everything here. Click next. It's going to run through its prerequisite check. After that, you can go ahead and go through the installation uh, to promote this to a domain controller. So we're going to install it and we'll come back after that installation is all done. All right, so the last thing that we have to do after creating that domain controller is we have to go in and change the DNS settings. So in order to do that, we're gonna do actually use the virtual networks tab. So we'll click the virtual network here and we're gonna go to DNS servers. We're gonna go click custom. We're gonna add a DNS server. So those static IPs that we said earlier or that I said earlier, uh, this is where those are gonna go. And we're going to save that. And that's basically it. Uh, so that's how you're going to create your domain controller. Uh, we can actually boot this uh, VM up so you can actually see that it is, in fact, a domain controller. But the reason I have two virtual machines is that I am going to create two domain controllers. And it's pretty common practice in the IT realm that you're going to create two domain controllers. The reason that that is is to... Uh, to have some sort of failover. So if for whatever reason that um, the server that you're actually hosting your domain on or your domain controller on goes down, then you actually have another domain controller. And because there's replication between the two, there should be minimal impact to your users. And because, you know, some people might say, oh, well, if you host the same domain controller on the same server, then uh, it's not really going to matter. Well, in this case, uh, these VMs are going to be hosted wherever Microsoft makes room for them. It's going to be highly unlikely that these two VMs are going to be on the same server. Uh, so let's just go ahead and show you that domain controller. We're going to log into it right now. As you can see, we actually have the Active Directory domain services role on the domain controller. And we're going to do this for our second domain controller in the background. We won't run you through that. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Uh, just a couple extra steps. Uh, anyway, in this video, you learned how to create a domain controller via Microsoft Azure. Uh, we just want to take this time to say thank you for all of your continued support. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button and check us out on our various social media channels to include Facebook. Don't forget to check out our website at www.cyberandyou.com. Don't forget to comment on this thread for any tips and tricks you might have when using Azure. We love hearing from our viewers, and we'll see you next time.